In order to catch everyone up to speed and to make sure we all understand the terminology I'll be using throughout the video, we need a very basic understanding of Greek mythology, so let's go through that now. In the beginning, there was nothing but chaos, the first thing. Then Gaia, the Earth, emerged from it, her being the first among the first classification of Greek beings called the primordial deities, which usually represent huge abstract ideas about the universe and reality. Also included was Uranus, or the sky. These aren't literally just the Earth and the sky as we know of them scientifically, but the abstract ideas of space and matter as well. A lot of weird stuff was born, some giants and a lot of other things, but eventually what we call the original 12 titans were born. They were the children of Gaia and Uranus. These titans tend to be more in line with the personification of certain natural phenomena, giving a personality to a natural thing. For example, one of these children are Hyperion, the titan of light, who gives birth to Helios, the titan who is the sun, and Selene, the titan who is the moon. While the primordial deities were more abstract and philosophical, the titans tended to be more natural. However, Uranus was like a super total massive jerk. He forced his own children, the titans, back in the womb of the earth after they were born. So one of the titans, Cronus, overthrew Uranus by cutting off his genitals. It was pretty intense. Instead of being a super total massive jerk like his father, he just decided to become a mega meanie jerk and not really learn anything from history at all and end up swallowing his own children. Those children, which I'll refer to in this video as the original six gods and goddesses. The mother of these children, and one of the titans, Rhea, eventually saved one child. You might have heard of him. He's named Zeus, the king of the gods and god of the sky and lightning. In a similar fashion, Zeus overthrew Cronus and established a new reign of the gods and goddesses on Mount Olympus, creating a panel of 12 gods to reign the universe. This panel is called the 12 Olympians, the ones most of us know from Greek mythology and is made up of the original six gods and goddesses, Zeus and his brothers and sisters, and eight of Zeus's children. Now, if you're pretty good at math, you can tell that's 14 deities, not 12. And that's because, most accurately, one of them is never really there, so he doesn't count. And at one point in time, one of Zeus's children took the place of Zeus's sister. So there was only ever 12 at any given point. We'll get into all that. It's just important to remember that there are six original deities, which are Zeus and his brother and sisters, even though he did end up marrying two of them. Then there's eight of Zeus's famous kids, which, when these are all mixed and matched, make up the Olympians. So those are the major events and classifications, the primordial deities, the titans, and the gods. The gods have some children with mortal humans, which typically result in demigods, mortal but powerful beings, and some gods have children that are animals or monsters too, and that's just about how everything comes about. So that might be a bit much if you're new to the topic, but as long as you remember there's different levels of beings and they each keep trying to overthrow each other and Zeus is right in the smack center of it, then you should be set. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more about all paths, religions, traditions, and pantheons, please be sure to hit that subscribe button. If you really, really liked the video, please be sure to hit that like button and leave a comment telling me if I should cover the Norse or Egyptian pantheon next. Either way, thanks for watching, friends. I'll see you around.